Hello there guys, got a video here for you today and we're going to be making an FX barrel. Now I've got a number of FX liners that I've got lying around which I want to make outer barrels for. In this video I'm going to be making a couple of components. So as I said before I've got the liners but I'm lacking the transfer ports, this steel joiner part here, the outer tube and the jam nut. So I thought I'd bring you along as we make a couple. Now I'm going to be making two barrels but I'm only really going to be showing you one. So they're both going to be 177s and one's going to be the standard 500mm long and the other is going to be 400 The components themselves won't change, it will just be this tube here that will get slightly shorter with a 400mm one and I'll obviously have to cut the liner down so I'll show you that as well. So we're going to be starting off with the jam nut and at first glance it's a fairly simple part however there are a couple little details which make them a little harder to make Number one, they're stainless steel. They're, I've tested them with a magnet and they're non-magnetic, so they're some form of stainless steel. And they have two O-ring grooves on them. One at the back here and one at the front. They also have these flats. They're not too much of a pain. It's just another setup in the mill. So I'm going to try and edit these videos a little differently this time. And I'll show you as much as I can. Let's get started. Okay, so we're starting off making the jam nut. I've just got some stainless 303 in the lathe. 303 stainless is fairly free machining, but like all stainlesses, it is a bit harder to work with than steel or brass or aluminium. So first we're going to turn the face, then turn the OD down to 12.65. That gives us a little bit of clearance on half inch UNF. Now I tried to do the turning without oil to get you a better picture, but the stainless started to tear. So I ran the jobs with just some cutting oil running on the part. Once we establish the OD we cut the thread gutter. This is an area of relief where the threading insert can run into and then we can retract the tool and do the next pass. And it was just a 45 on both ends and we started the thread cutting. So thread cutting stainless is a bit more difficult than cutting regular steel and I found the best way to do it is use a dedicated stainless steel threading insert. So I'll just show you a few passes as we start to cut the thread. As you can see, I take a cut, then put the lathe in reverse, get the tool behind the work, then take another cut. This just keeps the half nuts engaged. There's one less thing to think about when we're cutting the threads. Once we're getting close, I check the threads with a go gauge. The go gauge is just a gauge we use to check that the threads are cut deep enough and that we're not going to have any problems when screwing a moderator or anything onto it. So the first time I've put the thread gauge on, it doesn't quite go on. So I just keep taking very light cuts to both improve the surface finish of the threads and to cut them a little deeper. Then I just give the threads a little polish with a three corner file and some scotch bright and the go gauge goes straight on, no problems. After we cut the threads we drill the nut out. So we start out with an undersized bit and then we work up to the final diameters. In the jam nuts it's a 6.5mm hole at the very end and at the back it's a 7.1mm hole. So there's a tiny bit of clearance around the liner. And there's obviously a shoulder in there so the jam nut presses up against the face of the liner. We'll recut this at a later date to ensure that there's a nice flat face pressing up against the liner. Once the holes are drilled we can use an o-ring grooving tool to cut the rear o-ring in the back of the jam nut. So I make these a little tighter than the FX ones so that there's a nice grip on the liner as it goes in. Now the o-rings in the jam nut are seven by ones so they're very thin o-rings and I'm using a nice thin o-ring grooving tool. It is stainless so we have to be extremely careful not to break the tool but we have to be aggressive enough in the cuts to ensure that there's not work hardening on the face of the stainless steel. So once I've cut the groove and I've ensured that it's tight enough I can then part it off. The jam nut itself is 35 millimeters long so I just give a quarter of a mil so we've got something to face off when we turn it around in the lathe and that's what you see here. Face it off, then chamfer it, and just run a countersink in the end hole. Once the face has been cleaned up, we can reinstall the o-ring grooving tool and just square up the shoulder on the inside. And then like the back, we can cut the o-ring groove. Sorry about the out of focus. It's very, very hard to get the camera in a position where you guys can see what's going on and I can see what's going on. But hopefully in the next video, it'll be a little better. And the final operation is to put it in the mill. Now I put the jam nut in a four sided collet block so that we can mill the flats on it and ensure that they're nice and parallel to each other 
and I've got a vice stop up to ensure that the flats are going to be the same depth. So they're 2.5mm wide and the final cross flats dimension is 10mm. And then that's the jam that complete. The spanner fits on it nice and it's ready to be used. Once the jam that's done we can move on to the steel tube. Now this is very simple, it's just a piece of hydraulic tube with an OD of 14 and an ID of 12. So we face the end, give it a 45 and run a countersink in it, so that we've got a nice flat end to measure from. Then I measured how long I wanted it, cut it to length, and then re-gripped it in the chuck. Then we started a tap in the lathe, so it's nice and straight. The one you're seeing is a half inch UNF. Then we put it in a collet block and finish the tapping by hand. Because it's tube, we can't really grip it super tight in the three jaw chuck, otherwise it would distort the tube. So we started in the lathe, then grip it in a collet block to make sure that we're not gripping it too hard and putting marks or bending the tube any, in any way. This half inch UNF needs to be cut pretty deep, and the M13 on the other side was done the same. But I didn't bother showing that. And once in, both ends are tapped, we can put it back in the lathe on a mandrel and then give it a good polish. Now we polish it because we're going to blow it. So I started off with 400 grit and just worked through the grades, 400, 800, 1200, 2000, and then some auto sole to finish it off. And obviously when you're polishing in the lathe, you've got to give a light grip on the paper and just be careful. But I won't show it all as it's pretty boring. So the reason we polish it is because we're going to blow it. And the bluing works better on polished surfaces. You get a more even finish and the polishing just removes any surface oxidisation that's already on the tube. Right, now we can move on to bluing. Now I'm doing a cold blue. I'm using Super Blue from Birchwood Casey. So I just follow the instructions and we got the tube nice and polished. So that's the first step. Then we have to go over it with some nice fine wire wool. I think this is just to key the surface to make sure that the bluing has a surface to work from. Once we've wire walled it, we full, fully degrease it so it's with some isopropyl and give it a nice pat dry. And then we can start applying the super blue. Now I apply it with a rag, however, the instructions to say use a sponge or a piece of cotton wool. I couldn't find none, so I had to use a rag. With this stuff, I find the first coat's never really that even, and it's the next steps that even everything up. And in my experience, you have to put it on quite thick for it to start working properly. So the first coat goes on and it looks pretty patchy. But we just replete the steps so we can wire wool it, degrease it and apply another coat and just keep going until we're happy. Now it's never going to come out like the hot bluing or chemical bluing that FX use but I think we get a nice finish at the end. And you're never really going to see it as the barrel's always going to be under a shroud. So to get that finish I did 8 cycles. So I wire walled it degreased it, applied the bluing, and then rinsed it off with some cold water and just kept going until I was happy. When I was finished, I gave the barrel a nice good coat with oil and wrapped it in some oily rag. Now I used WD-40 first, gave it a good wipe over, then wiped what I could off and applied some 3-in-1 oil over the whole thing and just left it overnight. I'll get you a good close-up of it when I shaft all the components together but I think it came out pretty well. Okay, so next up we have the steel joiner. And like the jam nut, this is 303 stainless and we're turning the first diameter down to 12 millimeters. This is gonna be for the M12 by one thread that the transfer port screws onto. There's a little step down at the front so that it screws on all the way. And then we just put the thread gutter in, which is also the O-ring groove. So this needs to be 10 millimeters as the O-rings around the barrel are 10 by twos. So the thread gutter needs to be 10 millimeters in diameter. Then we just chamfer it and start threading. Now M12 by one is a bit easier to cut in stainless as it's a finer pitch and therefore a shallower depth. So we just keep threading, taking light passes and then checking with the transfer pull to make sure it fits on nicely. Once it's almost there, I get the three corner file out and re-polish the threads, making them nice and smooth. And then once the thread's cut, we can pull the rod out, mark the lamp, and then cut it off in a bandsaw. We can then mount it in a mandrel. 
Now that mandrel that you see in the chuck there is a piece of steel with an M12 by one thread cut in it. I mounted it in the chuck, then bumped it true so that it's running nice and true. Then we face it off, then screw the steel joiner part in. I also cut off a little bit of material off camera, just roughed it down a little bit. So we face it and turn it to the diameter. In this case it's 13.7 millimeters, and that gives the steel part a little bit of clearance in an FX block. Once that's done, we can turn the front down to 13 millimeters for the M13 by one thread. As I've got the cutting tool in the tool post, I just turn the little steel segments on them. These are just little relief segments that the grub screws screw into, so it doesn't raise any burrs and get the barrel stuck in a block. After that, we cut the thread gutter, 45 the ends, and start threading. Using the steel tube as a gauge. So it's still tight, but once we polish the threads with a three corner file and some Scotch Bright, clean them out with a toothbrush and it screws up nicely. Now it's very important that the steel tube comes up against the shoulder nice and tightly. Next we can drill the centre out. So we start with a centre drill, move to a 6mm cobalt drill, then an undersized drill and then the final size which is 7.1mm. Now it's important when drilling long holes like this that you use little pressure and a nice sharp drill bit. If the drill bit's blunt and you start putting lots of pressure in there then it's likely to cause the hole to go off centre. The drill bit will bend, it will start cutting one flute more than the other, and it will pull it off centre. So very, very light pressure, lots of oil, and just keep removing the drill, clearing the chips, and then going back in for another bite. But in this case, it goes nice and smoothly. And lastly, in this operation, we cut the O-ring groove. Now for this part, I made the o-ring groove a little bigger. I'm not sure if you could do it for any other caliber than the 177, but normally it's a 7 by one o-ring that goes in the end there. I changed it to a 7 by one5 I also made it a bit tighter than the original. For some reason, the 177 liners are really quite loose in the steel parts. So what I did was I increased the squeeze on the o-ring and made the liner a better fit. So it's nice and tight in the steel part. Then I just used a drill bit to remove the burrs that had been kicked up by the o-ring groover and gave everything a good clean. I just test fitted an o-ring in there just to make sure that the liner went in smoothly. Then we can remove the joiner from the mandrel just with some brass protecting the surface so it doesn't get marred up by the mole grips. Then we just turned around and deburred it. Right, that's going to be all the components for this part. I'll put them all on the bench and get you a good close up of them. Okay then guys. That's going to about do it for this part. I'll just give you a really good look over the components that we've made so far. So first of all, we tackled the jam nut. This is the half inch UNF part that goes on the end of the barrel and secures the liner. As you can see there, we've got the O-ring grooves in quite nicely. And the liner's a good fit in it. Feels nice on the liner, nice amount of grip there from the O-rings. Not too tight, but not too loose flats on the side there so we can tighten it up when it's in the barrel. Obviously I've got to cut the liner down. This is a 500mm liner so we need to cut it down to fit in this barrel. Next up is a steel tube. This is the part we blued. As you can see it came out quite nicely. The bluing does take some time to go off and it sort of evens up as time goes on. You could make it darker by keep going over but I've found that this amount is pretty good. You're never really going to see it as it's always going to be under a shroud anyway. And in there we've got the two threads, so a half inch UNF on one end, to accept the jam nut, and an M13 by one at this end to accept the steel joiner piece. And finally we have the steel joiner piece. So M13 by one at this end with a small step down shoulder here. This part here is what the grub screws screw onto and I made it the same dimension as an FX one. FX ones aren't tight in the block, it's the O-rings here and on the transfer port that give it the resistance as it pushes into the rifle. And on this end we have the M12 by one which the transfer port screws onto. As you can see I've already put a barrel O-ring on there 
and that, that just sits on that diameter there. I've checked this in a rifle and it fits quite nicely. And finally, we have the bore through the middle and the larger O-ring installed in this end. That's now a nice tight fit on the liner. As you can see there, it won't fall off on its own and it's got a nice amount of resistance as we move the liner back and forward. I don't know why, but FX seems to make the 177 ones very loose. A 2.2 liner in a 2.2 steel part is quite tight, as is a 2.5 and a 3.0. However, the 177 doesn't seem to have any resistance there at all. I've changed that on this one, obviously, and now the liner's nice and tight. So in the next video, we'll be making the transfer port. It's a fairly complex little thing. It's got a few features on it. But I'll show you how I do them. I've made a couple of these now. These used to be super expensive, like £43, so I just make my own now. I think you can get them cheaper from Sportsman's Gun Centre now, but as I've already got the drawing, I might as well make one. The only thing I can't make in the FX barrel is obviously the liner. The liner uses specialist machinery to make, and I don't have that obviously. The other thing for FX barrels I make is liner supports. I'll talk more about these and show you them when we start cutting the liner down. But that is going to be in the next video. So, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.